Hello, I will now be going through the MCQs of 2021. Let's begin first with question 1. Which of the following shows the correct structure of triglyceride? Now if you look across the structures, there will be two that you can cancel out immediately. Number 1 is C, because when you look at this, this is not as this is not an ester linkage. An ester linkage, the O should be double bonded to a C. If you look at D, this is also not an ester linkage. Ester linkage come with two oxygens and one carbon. So let's look at A and B. A and B are most likely the answer. However, if you look at the orientation, that's the only thing that differs. So how do we figure out which is which? Well, you have to recall that when we look at glycerol, glycerol is an alcohol. So what its structure originally looks like is something like that. Okay, with three alcohols sticking up. So, uh, on the other hand, the acid looks something like that. With a C with a double bond O, and then there's an OH, and then um, it's the chain that is, um, that is attached to it. So when it gives up water, it gives up water in this way. The hydrogen comes from the alcohol, and the OH comes from the acid and that's why the orientation of what you have left will go something like that okay so the answer is b next let's go to question two question two asks which best represents the general chemical formula of monosaccharides um, the answer would have to be a okay this one you can refer to your notes this is the general formula of a monosaccharide Okay, just take note that this only applies to the monosaccharide. This general formula does not apply to disaccharides because in disaccharides, it would have lost a water molecule to be able to form the glycosidic bond as well as polysaccharides. So this only applies for monosaccharides. Number three, which test would detect lipids in a mixture? If you look across the board, actually, B is the best answer because all you need is ethanol followed by water. You do not need 1% copper sulfate. 1% copper sulfate is often found in the experiment where we want to test for proteins. Sodium hydroxide is also not required to test for lipids. That's required for the test, uh, the Burets test to test for proteins. Next, let's go to question 4. The diagram shows four different amino acids, each with a different R group. Which amino acid could form hydrogen bond between its R group and that of another appropriate amino acid? So anything that can form a hydrogen bond would have to be likely polar in nature. So let's look for polar R groups. First and foremost, you need to know which are the R groups. This is an R group. This is also an R group. This is another R group. And this is another R group. Out of all of these R groups, the only one that has a polar functional group is this one over here. So for question 4, B would be the best answer. This one over here, this large structure, does not come with any polar functional groups. Same for A and same for H. In fact, A, C and D are non-polar functional groups. Let's go to question 5. Question 5 shows a dipeptide. When we say it's a dipeptide, that means it's made up of amino acids. Which bond is the peptide bond? Um, so we look across the board. This one over here is C double bond O with an NH. That is the peptide bond. Everything else is not a peptide bond. They are merely just covalent bonds linking the atoms together. Let's go to question 6. Which nitrogenous base is not found in RNA? First and foremost, let's figure out what's what. Thymine is a, nitro tri <coughs> a nitrogenous base. Uracil is a nitrogenous base. Tyrosine is actually an amino acid. Okay. Uh, uridine is actually uracil, which is the nitrogenous base, plus the sugar the pento sugar okay so which of which one which nitrogenous base is not found in rna first you must know which one are nitrogenous bases a and c are nitrogenous bases b and d are not 
So which one is not found in RNA? Thymine is not found in RNA. Uracil is found in RNA. Thymine is found in DNA. So the answer is A. Let's go to question 7. Which describes the mechanism of enzyme action? Let's look through the options. An enzyme decreases activation energy of the reaction. This is true. An enzyme decreases the activation energy of the substrate. Okay, this is not true. All right, it decreases the activation energy of the entire reaction, not just the substrate alone. C, an enzyme increases kinetic energy of the reaction. It does not. Enzymes do not contribute energy to the, any reaction. Therefore, D is also wrong. It cannot contribute energy to the reaction. Okay, so the answer is A. Next, let's look at 8. A cube of potato tissue was moved from solution X to Y and the cells became less turgid. So if we look at a cell, okay, a plant cell, if it becomes less turgid, it means water has left the plant cell. All right? And they say that they move it from solution X to solution Y. So this plant cell is now in solution Y and water has left the potato tissue. When we say it's less turgid, it means there's less water inside. Which option currently explains the change? Okay, so perhaps let's answer, let's look at this column over here. Did water leave or enter the cell? Water will have exited the cell. Okay, so you can rule out A and C as the answer already. So we are left with B and D. Okay, for B and D, now let's figure out the water potential. If water leaves the cell, it means that water was moving from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential. So the answer would have to be D. The water potential of solution Y is lower than that of the water potential of solution X. That explains the direction of movement of water. Therefore, for it, D is the answer. Let's go to question 9. Question 9 shows a plant cell. They ask which structure is also found in prokaryotes. If you look into your notes, prokaryotes are cells that do not come with any membrane-bound organelles. Okay, When we say membrane-bound organelles, <coughs> we mean to say that, you know, for example, it doesn't have a nucleus, doesn't have the endoplasmic reticulum. Anything that comes with membranes within itself, itself it does not have. Okay, so will it have, let's see what it won't, uh, will also have. So first and foremost, it should have X. X is the cytoplasm, so it should have at least X. What is Y? Y are likely chloroplasts inside the plant. This come with, chloroplasts have membranes. So anything with Y cannot be the answer. Z. Z is a vacuole. Vacuole is enclosed by a membrane. So anything with Z also cannot be the answer. W. W is a nucleus. Nucleus comes with membrane. So anything W also cannot be the answer. So the best answer is A. Okay, so prokaryotes. Um, will only share this, uh, this similarity as cytoplasm. Next, let's go to 10. What is the sequence of the corresponding mRNA segment resulting from the transcription of this gene? They say that this is the non-template. Right? They did not provide whether this is 5' prime to 3', prime, so you can assume that this is the 5 to 3. Usually, if we do not provide um, the directionality, you can assume that it's from 5 to 3. So what would be the corresponding segment? Okay, uh, if we were to transcribe this, okay, all you really have to do is to, okay, uh, there are two ways to go about it. The template strand goes something like that. C, A, G, T, C, A, G, T, T. Alright, you could transcribe from the template strand 
and then it will be something like that if it's complementary you'll go g t right no t so u c a g u c a a right and the direction goes five to three okay the mrna strand is <coughs> complementary to the template which is this one here and also runs in opposite direction from five to three okay so the answer is d or alternatively the faster way would be that you make reference to this non-template strand everything that's t you just change it to a u which is what i've done over here and that should be the answer okay so these are the uh, answers for the 2021 mcq paper